to another episode of Hallmark Happenings Podcast. I am your host, Betsy, and today we are recapping the top moments from Season 8 of When Calls the Heart. I know what you're thinking. Didn't When Calls the Heart end like several weeks ago? Yes, that is true. That is true. But do we really want to stop talking about it yet? I don't think so. The season was amazing. There were so many ups and downs, so many huge moments, so many sweet little moments. This was a huge season. Tons of character development, tons of really unexpected storylines. And so I just feel like it's really important to recap these moments. And I am going through right now and re-watching season eight, as I recommend you all do, because I guarantee you, you're going to pick up on things you did not realize the first time around. I know I did. I was like, whoa, I had absolutely no memory of that. And of course, we know the end outcome of the love triangle. So going back and watching it with this new perspective will bring some nice closure for everybody with all the crazy things going on this season. So definitely go back and rewatch that. And I am here to reach across the party lines and reunite the Hardys. We are so much more than just Team Nathan or Team Lucas. We are Team Hope Valley. And so I hope that this recap reminds you of all the wonderful characters and storylines from When Calls the Heart. So I encourage everyone to continue watching through season nine, at least maybe for more seasons. Let's just stay devoted and dedicated to this amazing show that has been on for years. And let's just rally behind all of these amazing creators, cast and crew who have brought us these characters and stories that we hold near and dear to our heart. And I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to see all of the storylines that are planned for season nine. Today, I will be breaking down the top moments for When Calls a Heart season eight by character. I decided to do it by character rather than by numbers. I thought by doing it by character would be a little bit easier to kind of recap all the different things each character went through. Because when I started creating the list of top moments, I was at probably 30 or 40, and it was just so many. So uh, breaking it down by character just made a little bit more sense. We are starting off with Fiona. In season eight, Fiona opens a barber shop, which is definitely ahead of her time because she's a female entrepreneur. Girl power. She even decided to run for mayor and has plans to go into the oil business with Hickam. She is blazing her own path after having left the telephone company. Wow, this girl is going places. And speaking of Hickam, this blossoming romance slash friendship between Hickam and Fiona is so adorable. And do we all remember when Fiona cut Hickam's ear as her first barbershop customer? That is the beginning of a beautiful friendship slash hopefully romantic relationship. And how great is it that Hickam's role in the show this season has really been upped? He's been there since the very beginning. And I just want to shout out to the writers for giving Ben Rosenbaum some really interesting storylines this season. Hickam also got a bit injured during the oil derrick fire, but thankfully he ended up just fine. And we see the season ending with Hickam also running for mayor along with Fiona and Hickam was handed over the reins to Gowan Petroleum. Now he will be taking on a ton of responsibility in that role. And we saw the very end of the season, Hickam and Fiona riding off together into the sunset on a motorcycle with him holding on to Fiona as she drove away. Again, girl power. She is totally embracing the feminist wearing pants. I mean, wow, she is ahead of her time. Very fun to watch. I'm sure both of them have very bright things ahead of them. Next up, we have Clara and Jesse. They started off the season with anything but marital bliss. Talk about a short honeymoon phase. But it was cute to see them ride off together on that two-person bike. I think, what was that, episode one? Episode two? And speaking of bikes, did anyone just laugh out loud when Jesse kept riding Lee's motorcycle around? He looked like an ornery little 10-year-old who just got a bike for Christmas, and he was just having way too much fun with that. And I think for pretty much the entire season, it at least for me, it felt like Clara was playing the mom role to Jesse. She seemed to be constantly scolding him and giving him a bit of the cold shoulder. So that relationship has grown into something a little unexpected. They were so lovey-dovey for a while, and now they are... During the problems that I guess a lot of newlyweds 
go through. So it's more of a realistic look at a new marriage. She found out that he lost all of their savings in a bad investment decision, which was revealed in more detail at the end of season eight. It all ended well. Once Jesse was found from being lost in the mountains, they got their money back. And it seemed like both Clara and Jesse ended season eight in a good place. Hopefully they're able to overcome their differences and be a happily wedded couple. <laughs> it is now time to talk about Molly and Bill, Moby, one of the most unexpected Hope Valley couples, in my opinion. These two had very brief but meaningful interactions throughout the entire season. Did anybody else lose it when Molly wore that fancy pink dress and the next day Bill said, that was some dress, Molly. Oh my goodness, I was losing it. And Florence's face in any scene when she gets to watch Molly and Bill is so funny. Go back and watch season eight and watch Florence's face. Hilarious. I cannot wait to see where they take this couple next season. And it's so nice because both of them really haven't had romantic interest throughout any of the other seasons. So let's bring these two together. Team Moby. There was also a really sweet scene in the Mounties office when Molly was encouraging Bill to try on a surge one last time. Oh, the chemistry there. It was so, so sweet. And back to Molly, when she and Florence had this beautiful friendship moment right before Florence's wedding, you kind of got away from the romantic relationships throughout the whole season and you focused on just what true friendship is. Hashtag Team Flomo. Going back to Bill now, he had some very fiery scenes, especially during Nathan's inquiry. And it was nice to see him kind of still have that, that passion for justice and law in him while he's juggling his responsibilities as both a judge and a cook at Abigail's Cafe. Another great couple, Florence and Ned. Oh, Florence and Ned. What a season for Florence and Ned. These two characters really got so much screen time this season, which is wonderful because they're both such awesome characters and awesome actors. And again, so many of the supporting roles really, really were elevated this season, which is so nice, not just bringing in new characters, but giving these characters that have been in Hope Valley since season one, the very beginning, more of a presence in the show. So I really am glad John Tinker and the rest of the writers thought about the decision of giving these actors more screen time because they already had storylines going on. And it's been so great to see a little more in depth about what they're going through in Hope Valley. And with Florence and Ned, they had little sweet looks and little moments where they were touching hands throughout the season in the mercantile. And we really got to see this romance blossom and grow into something so special. Of course, they had their serious moments when Ned was injured and he had to go into the infirmary and undergo surgery. But this, in turn, seemed to help and accelerate Ned and Florence growing closer. And they realized with everything going on and his serious health issues how much they truly care for one another and why should they wait. They just jumped right into marriage and they knew that they were meant to be together, which I think a lot of Hardys were like, oh, a quick, fast romance, no drawn out love triangle over three seasons. It was just nice to see something with no obstacles for the most part and go right into this beautiful relationship and a marriage. And of course, that wedding, how gorgeous was that? Florence looked beautiful. Everybody was there. It was such a sweet moment. Of course, Ned's daughter came back, Katie. Katie Yost, it has been a few seasons since we've seen her. And it was nice to see a familiar face back in Hope Valley. And it all worked out. Such a great moment for the show. And I was watching a bunch of interviews before the wedding happened. And all of the actors were like, I'm really excited for a wedding. And I had in my head the whole time, I was thinking it was Faith and Carson. Well, we know that was not what happened but it ended up being Florence and Ned. So unexpected, but in the most pleasant way. <laughs> oh, plus Ned apparently invented the Band-Aid. Who knew? Good job, Ned. Next up, we have the Canfields. Oh, what an amazing addition this group of actors has been to the show. With Joseph becoming the new pastor, it's really brought back the role of faith into the show, and it was nice to see him counsel both Jesse and Clara, getting them back on the right track for their marriage. And we learned about the struggles that they've gone through, which put things into perspective for viewers, I think. And it brought a different dynamic completely from anything else we've seen. Here you have a full, true family. No people are separated from someone else. They've not had a spouse pass away. They don't have a single parent raising a child. This was truly, truly a family. 
a mother, father, and these two great kids. So it was really great to see this addition of a family into Hope Valley. Another thing that I thought was so special about the Canfields was the fact that we saw Elizabeth grow closer to both Minnie and Angela. And by her growing so close to Angela and helping her learn to read Braille, I feel like this bridged the gap that existed between Elizabeth and her students all season, since they were not able to be such a big part of the show as they normally are due to COVID. Seeing her interact with another student, you remember, it took us back to Elizabeth's roots of why she even came to Hope Valley, because she wanted to be a teacher, because she wanted to help children learn. And we really got a taste of that in a very special and unique way with Angela. I also want to give a huge, huge, massive shout out to Vienna Leacock, who plays Angela. This was her first on-camera acting role. Boy, did she do an amazing job. Great, great job, Vienna. Did you know that Cooper and Angela are played by Viv Leacock's actual children? And FYI, if you did not know, Viv Leacock plays Joseph Canfield. So you have three Leacocks playing three of the four Canfields. Definitely a family affair and even makes just this family's addition to the show that much more special. I also recently found out that Natasha Burnett, who plays Minnie, is British. Who would have thought her accent is flawless? And as far as her acting goes, she brought so much depth to her character and really a character I don't think we've seen anyone like her before on Hope Valley. And it was so nice to see her slowly open up and kind of grow out of being so protective into more accepting and seeing everyone accept her. It was just very sweet, fantastic acting by Natasha Burnett. We are so excited to see what else the Canfields will be going through in season nine. Also, little Cooper at the end of at the end of episode 12, when he was ringing the bell and his little legs were flying up, it reminded me of Runaway Bride. Does anyone remember that scene? Julia Roberts is ringing the bell in the church and she's swinging around. It just reminded me of that. On to everybody's favorite Hope Valley couple, Lee and Rosemary. In season eight, Lee and Rosemary just got back from their extravagant South American excursion. I think they went to South America. I think that's right. Does anyone remember the scene with Elizabeth bringing a little bit of Hawaii to the Coulter household? She brought a Hawaiian dinner, candles, some Hawaiian music to them as a thank you for watching Little Jack. How crazy a foreshadowing is this since Pascal and Kevin are starring in the upcoming Hallmark movie set in Hawaii. You had me at Aloha. Just a funny connection. It sounds like it was all meant to be. They are definitely Hawaiian people, apparently. And if you recall, in the very beginning, Rosemary broke Lee's beloved chair that they brought back from their trip. She built him his own little woodworking shop in the backyard. A huge point of the first several episodes was the continuation of Lee's sister, Susanna, from Bellingham, bringing her daughter, Rachel, to Hope Valley. And then, whoo, bombshell, she asked Lee and Rosemary to allow Rachel to move in with them. Well, it was shocking, but I think everyone was excited to see Lee and Rosemary go into this parental role that they had not quite had before. They now had the responsibility of caring for someone else. It gave them a nice taste of what parenthood is like. Of course, it only lasted for a few episodes because the spunky Rachel, played by Jennifer Laporte, left after just a few episodes. I don't know. I think it was episode seven, eight. I can't remember exactly, but she wasn't there too long. However, her story was a fresh addition to Hope Valley. She found young love with Henry's son, Christopher, played by James Drew Dean. And how nice was it to see young adults falling in love on the show? Everyone else is at least in their late 20s, if not early 30s and older. So it was a breath of fresh air to see two people probably discovering love for the very first time. Hopefully the writers bring these two characters back in season nine because fans really did enjoy seeing them together. Before we finish up with Lee and Rosemary, let's transition back to Rosemary because she started the Valley Voice newspaper. I cannot think of a better job for Rosemary to take on. The scene in Lee's office when she was starting the paper was incredibly comical. So bravo, Pascal and Kevin. Next up, Henry Gowan. Goodness, did a lot happen to Henry or what? From his unfortunate health scare to rejoining Gowan Petroleum, Henry had a lot on his plate. Not to mention the fact that his long-lost son, Christopher, came into town. I think Christopher entering Henry's life really brought out a side of Henry that we don't see too often. Outside of his business endeavors, we saw his sweet and caring side for a family member. 
And a ton, I mean a ton, of hints were dropped about Henry's secret ongoing relationship with Abigail. Let me tell you, that did not go over any Hardy's heads. On all the Facebook groups, on Instagram, everybody caught that. We learned he has been writing letters to her for a while now. The camera frequently panned over to Abigail's cafe. Henry even mentioned her multiple times, maybe indirectly, but we, we all knew who we were talking about, Henry. Could this mean that Lori Laughlin is poised to make a return to When Calls the Heart next season? A lot of fans are totally on board for this. Let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment. Do you want to see Abigail return? And finally, Henry left town rather unexpectedly, leaving fans wondering if this was his last season for Gowan. We hope not, but we will see what happens in season nine. Faith and Carson. These two started the season a bit rocky. There was definitely a power struggle between them in the infirmary now that Faith has become a doctor. Great job for her. Again, girl power way ahead of her time. A female doctor in like the early 1920s. That did not happen. So I love that the writers are including that. But by having this power struggle, it really showed Faith's independent side and how she needs to stand up for herself. So great messages for all the girls out there. And I thought the gift of the embroidered doctor's bag was really sweet that Carson gave to her. We also got to see Paul Green sing and play guitar on the show. Did you know that he is actually an accomplished musician in real life? If you have not, you should check out his Facebook concerts. You definitely need to. He's super talented. As the season progressed, we saw Carson seriously considering proposing to Faith. But unfortunately, Faith had other plans. And this scene with Minnie and dunking his hands into the pudding in search of this elusive engagement ring was hilarious and a bit icky, but definitely funny. But their romance came to an end when Carson decided to leave Hope Valley and Faith on a stagecoach headed to a surgical fellowship at Johns Hopkins. Well, we can't blame him. He's following his dream. He's following his passion. He's going to help so many people. But this left everyone wondering, is there a future for Faith and Carson? All signs, in my opinion, point to no. I think Faith is now destined to be with Nathan, as revealed in one of the last scenes of season eight, when Faith and Nathan had a moment while she was helping Nathan's hand injury. So we need to decide on a couple name for Faith and Nathan. Faith and Nath? So it looks like it's goodbye, Team Infirmary, and hello, Team Dr. Mounty. Okay, you have been waiting this entire episode for me to break down the top character moments for our love triangle characters. I'm going to start with Nathan. Nathan, as we all know, was not chosen by Elizabeth as her true love. However, he had a lot more going on outside of vying for Elizabeth's hand. From episode one, he was dealing with Allie's outlaw father who came into town in search of money. And surprisingly, he asked Lucas for the money that he needed to give Allie's dad. Thankfully, we saw no further mention of Allie's father after episode one. Also, during episode one, Nathan put into motion his efforts to officially adopt Allie, which was really, really sweet. In episode two or three, Nathan revealed in a heart-wrenching moment that he was in love with Elizabeth. Oh, did anyone else's heart break during this scene? I mean, right off the bat, Nathan shares his true feelings for Elizabeth. And he took it like a trooper, but oh gosh, it was really, it was hard to watch. At the end of episode three or four, Elizabeth told Lucas that she rejected Nathan. So it seems like the writers actually told us very, very early on in the season that Nathan would not be Elizabeth's final choice as a romantic interest. I noticed this when I went back and watched the first few episodes of season eight. I was like, whoa, they literally told us. But I think we all thought it was going to change further on. Of course, it did not. But after that, he was busy dealing with his own drama of the controversial inquiry by the Mounties. And continuing on in the season, another huge bombshell was dropped when the Hardys learned Nathan was replaced by Jack in the Fort Claim mission that claimed Jack's life. Whew. Talk about a huge moment. Shocker. This caused a lot of confusion amongst audiences, myself included. And I think we all realize that the guilt he must have been holding onto for the last three seasons when it came to Elizabeth. Of course, we all know Elizabeth told Nathan that she loved him as a friend, but not romantically. And he handled the rejection really, really well. As Elizabeth said, he handled it impeccably. And what about that scene between Lucas and Nathan at the end? It was quite unexpected, 
but hopefully there is a future of friendship for them, possibly. I have to point out this romance between Allie and Robert is adorable, just adorable. And next up to the second person in our love triangle, Lucas. The season started with Lucas's mom coming into town. Lucas's mom, played by Terrell Rothery, who was fantastic as the feisty and opinionated Helen Bouchard. It was nice to learn a bit more about where Lucas comes from, and when his mom revealed that she and Lucas's dad had separated, this showed fans how important relationships and marriages are to Lucas. Plus, the moment between Helen and little Jack was, in my opinion, I thought it was like foreshadowing of them becoming relatives in upcoming seasons, hopefully, if Lucas and Elizabeth do get married, and it was very sweet. We saw Lucas struggling with making Gowan Petroleum profitable. I feel like his storyline for the most of the season was spent trying to woo Elizabeth while watching the town from up on his balcony, drinking, you know, his little cup of tea. It's very British of him, even though the last name is like French, but it seemed very British to me. And then we have the moment, the big, big moment, the kiss. Yes, the kiss. Talk about passionate, Ooh, especially for Hallmark. It was a nice departure from the sweet and simple kisses that we normally see at the ends of Hallmark movies, because these two characters have had so much pent up passion for the last couple seasons that it reached the boiling point. You had this really big kiss moment on a bridge. <laughs> And I thought it was a very great way to close the season with Elizabeth's private book reading between Elizabeth and Lucas. It was very sweet and we got to see her published book. So yay. Finally, last but absolutely not least, Elizabeth. Not only did Elizabeth choose a suitor, but she also had a meaningful connection with her new student, Angela. This, like I said earlier, really took us back to the reason why she even came to Hope Valley. She is a teacher, first and foremost, a teacher. And it was so great to see her just feel so strongly about wanting to help them. I loved that. It was just, it made me smile. Did it make you smile? She even finally got her book edited and published as she was working with her future mother-in-law, Helen Bouchard, which was great because she's been working on this for seasons and seasons. So we got to see a final finished product of her published book, A Single Mother on the Frontier. And Elizabeth was dealing with her own struggles and obstacles when it comes to schooling because the county school representative, Mr. Landis, was threatening to close down the Jack Thornton school. That did not happen. Yay. And it ended on such a great note with the kids coming together and welcoming Angela. And then that graduation ceremony with Robert graduating. How did he grow up so fast? It seems like just yesterday he and Cody were playing pirates outside. Oh, that kid, he has grown up so fast. But now we will see him transition into maybe becoming a Mountie and a little romance with Allie. Anyway, Elizabeth and Rosemary endured a rough patch in their friendship, which was resolved by the end of the season. It was hard to watch them go through awkwardness, but it was so great to see them finally reconcile because we never want to see that again. Please do not have Elizabeth and Rosemary at odds. And then, of course, she made her decision to pick Lucas, which was extremely controversial, I know, I know, but... As I said in the beginning of this episode, let's be Team Elizabeth. Let's be Team Hope Valley, Team One Calls the Heart. And I think there are a lot of storylines still available for both Elizabeth and Lucas and Nathan. Nathan has so much he could do. So I hope everyone continues watching because so much happened in this last season, season eight, that has opened the door for a million possibilities in season nine. And it's going to be a great, great season nine. I'm sure filming will start, what, July? So very quickly, we'll hopefully get some behind the scenes pictures. I hope you enjoyed the season eight recap of When Calls the Heart. There are a million moments I probably missed. If I did, please feel free to put it in comments on any of my social media accounts. I want to know what your thoughts were. What were your favorite moments? Which characters do you just love watching in this show? It was a wonderful season. I hope you all continue watching and preparing for season nine. Please subscribe to my podcast if you like it. You can follow me on all of my social media accounts at Hallmark Happenings Podcast. It has been great spending this time with you, and I will see you again soon. Thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm.